in looking toward the remainder of the 21st century, what kind of leadership or changes in, in our leadership do we need to have the remainder of this 21st century? And how do we prepare those leaders? How do we have an education system that will produce good leaders and leaders with vision and leaders with understanding and leaders with wisdom? Well, first of all, we've got to learn to see what problems we are actually facing and not just the superficial results that we see on the surface or that are reported in the news, uh, so-called. And uh, we're going to have to be able to really know on a wide basis what is really happening in all of our different locations and what is the, is re the real cause, what is causing things that are similar in all the locations and what's causing things that are different in different locations. we got to be able to see the whole picture of how things that happened in the past are causing problems to be still here now and how we are doing things now that are going to create the future problems. We got to have an accurate vision of all of this so that we don't just throw out words or just throw out problems and really with no real understanding of what's really going on or what the real answers are. You know, for instance, you know, you can just assume that various people that are, are marching in the streets are all have the same idea about why they're marching. All have the same vision for the future when maybe they all have different visions or different understandings of what they're marching about. Different grievances. We got to understand what the grievances are of each individual and how, how, the, how many of them are similar and how many of them are just different things. And how many of them are based on facts and how many of them are based on just on uh, a superstition or a uh, false idea or just something they heard by leaders or so forth and so on like that. When it comes to such things as white supremacy and utilizing using the word white supremacy comes to things such as Black Lives Matter and, and using that phrase in every kind of situation. I think everyone in the country believes in the basic idea that black lives matter, but they just disagree on the methods that need to be used to, to you know, to propose and propound the idea uh, and put the idea forward and keep it before the people and keep people reminded so that black lives doesn't, don't remain out of sight, right, out of mind. That's the main idea is that black lives don't remain out of sight and out of mind. Because in so, a lot of instances, it's not that there's hatred for black people. It's just that uh, because of the fact that, uh, the, that uh, Caucasian people are at the present time in the majority, that many of them, uh, they're not affected by it and they don't see it. And they, they, you know, they don't even think about in their lives one way or the other about, you know, the different problems that are going on with the black communities. It's just not on their mind, and that's the main problem, not that they have any actual hatred for black people. And in other cases, you know, law enforcement and so forth, they just want the problem to go away, and they don't really want to become involved in politics and determining what is causing the problems. They just want to deal with it and get it done. And so we have to understand all these things. People see things differently. And back to what I was starting to say about the white supremacists, when we start throwing that around, are the majority of the white people against black people or hate their black people? Or is it just simply the fact that there are more Caucasian people in the, in the United States than there are black people at the present time? And so therefore, is that the natural result is there are more white people in the government, more Caucasian people in government, and in leadership positions and, and in the law enforcement than there are black people at the present time, in certain, especially in certain locations. Uh, and, uh, but does that constitute knowingly being a white supremacist? We know we have groups in the country 
that are that knowingly want to be white supremacists that don't don't see the value of our intercultural relations or or don't want there to be other cultures besides their own. We know there are certain small groups like that, but we can't take a label that we apply to them and apply the same label to all Caucasian people. Otherwise, we get mixed up on what we really mean, and then it becomes a buzzword, as they say, and then it loses its real meaning. We've got to have a designation that we use to, to, to uh, designate those people that are have open hatred towards the black people and do not uh, some cases though, there are those that have open hatred toward the black people other cases they just want their own their, their own culture and their own color as it were uh, to be the only one and whether or not they hate the black people they just want their their, their particular uh, race to be the one that is the majority and they want their particular race to be the one that continues and uh, mostly into the future and things like that. And that's what they're really looking at. And so that we have separate groups even within the white supremacists. And so we have to be able to see all that. And then we have other white people, other Caucasian people, that they want to do right. They want to see the black people in the right light, but they just have leftover pre prejudices and, and superstitions that they just don't know how to deal with. And they're busy with their lives and they don't really have time to stop and think about it. So we got to see the differences in all these things. To see that there's different groups of people, different classes of people within every race that see things different even among themselves. And uh, as just I said, the Black Lives Matter, they see things different. The leaders see things different from many of the people that belong to the organization. The people that donate money to this Black Lives Matter may see things different than those that are involved in doing the street work. And so we have to see the differences on all that. It is not it is not all just one Black Lives Matter group, and it is not all just one white supremacist group. And so for me a twenty one first century twenty first century leadership is training people to have the vision to see the differences and all the uh various implications of the different w w t ways of thinking and then therefore they're able to educate people as to how to, how to overcome each one of those particular uh, missing uh, particular areas of misinformation particular areas of misleadership and you do have a lot of misleadership in all areas in the uh, Caucasian camp and in the black camp some misleadership and we, we have to be able to have the vision to know where there's misleadership and we have to have the vision to know where the leadership is correct and we have to know how to uh, have proper communication and not let these term these terminologies and these buzzwords and these different ways of looking at things uh, cause us to lose the ability of communication about real ideas and back to the word uh, back to the the where I was talking about the grievances Having the amount of communication, the, the quality of communi uh, communication between the races of people in the country in order to understand what the real grievances are as separate from those that are just uh, being uh, bandied about, you know, as j with an ulterior motive of something actually different, all totally different from what the actually words are seem to be expressing. We have to understand what the real grievances are and where the real areas of disenfranchisement is and what is causing some people to not have access to as many resources as other people. Why some people, whether it is among the Caucasian or the black people don't have uh, the, the same uh, ability to take advantage of all of the good things in the country and don't have the ability to take advantage of the American dream the way, the way we should. And what is causing them, it is different. It is naturally different causes in the, a lot of times, not always, but a lot of times the different causes that happen in the Caucasian community and what is causing it in the black community we have to see that difference but we have to understand that there are real grievances whether it's actually what we're hearing or whether it's not there are real grievances 
and there are real cases of underprivileged, and there are real cases of disenfranchisement. And better communication is going to enable us to deal with those things. And sometimes it doesn't really make for better communication just to say, well, the only answer is just each go their own way and don't even try to communicate, you know, because there's no hope of ever rec any reconciliation, you know. Just like, you know, in a marriage, sometimes it, people who just decide that, you know, each one of them have another person they want to go to, so they'll just go tell the, the judge they, it's the irreconcilable difference. It may not even be. That may not be at all. Maybe they may have another direction they want to go. And so a lot of times there are reconcilable differences. They just don't want to see them. And that's, that's the way it is between the uh, different communities in America and the, the different races is there's a lot of reconcilable areas that can be approached and things can be reconciled, things can be dealt with. It's just a matter of the way we approach it and the ability to develop good communication. So by getting all of our terms correct and understanding what we mean by all of our terms and not just throwing things out there, that enables that communication and that conversation to begin that is going to really deal with the problem. We want to really deal with the problems and the root problems, the root causes, rather than just uh, dealing with something that remains a mystery as to what is really happening or what's really going on and just trying to hide behind words and terminology. And so we need to look at the look at determining ways that we can communicate and talk to one another and ask why are do you have this grievance? And why is it that uh, you know for instance that you uh, don't get along well with the uh, the police and then and, you know and then maybe the police why ask the police why do you not actually get along with the black people why are they uh, why are do they bother you and, and uh, why are you superstitious against them and be able to use the right terminology and get the real reasons for it and deal with it get the real reasons on both sides and there are reasons on both sides why that the black people are suspicious of the police and there's real reasons why the police seem to not be able to deal with them uh, in the same way that they can with the, with the uh, Caucasian people. Understanding all these differences, our real leadership is going to have to learn to deal with all this. And we're going to have to know the differences in where the case exists, where people are just holding on to old ideas, holding on to the way. Well, as a police department, we've dealt with this this way all these years, and so we're just continuing our tradition. That's the way we've always dealt with it. Why is it not work still? Why is it not working today when it worked in the past? And just hiding behind that, or whether they're actually asking themselves what has changed in the country that causes the old ways to no longer work, and how can we update that so that it works better? And that all goes right back to that communication, learning to co really truly com uh, communicate more between. And not waiting till the problem develops in the communities and not, not waiting till something happens or until you have to send officers out there, but to spend time going out among the community and, and uh, putting in community programs, get, doing things that will cause you to be out there among them all the time and be able to uh, learn to how to communicate in a good situation. You know, something like having having a community barbecues or a community get-togethers uh, over special things. And learning how to communicate, generally communicate, so that you understand by the time you have a problem, a, a crime or something you have to deal with, you understand uh, the people better and how to communicate better. So all these kinds of things we need to learn to deal with in the 21st century. We need leaders that know how to deal with these new changes. A lot of things have to be updated because we've made a lot of mistakes in the past. All across the board, what the Caucasian people have made their mistakes, the black people have made their mistakes. In the future, we've got to overcome all those and learn that we're living in a different age and a different time. And so I'm going to pray right now that everyone of all the races gain a greater vision, that they all are able to go to that mountaintop, look over into a new promised land where we have a prosperity for all and a uh, uh, no one is disenfranchised. Everyone's created equal. Everyone's able to communicate with one another. And I pray now if there's anybody sick or ill 
Oh, dear God, it should raise them up out of that sickness, whether it's a disease is curable or incurable. Raise them up. Raise them up out of any depression, oppression, or depression, or any kind of area of blues or less than full happiness. That you'll give them greater happiness than they ever had in their life, greater joy, greater peace, greater, a uh, greater, uh, 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 greater sense of having overcome everything in their life. We pray now that you'd, you'd heal people, raise them up, give them joy. We pray all these things in the name of the Holy Son of Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen.